how I started, finished, published my first and my best selling book. Tonight we'll be going into the dirty little secrets, the real, real, the up high and the downloads of it all. And at first I want to say though, it was not my dream to become an author, right? So I know some people, you maybe are watching this here and you've lived your life and you're just like, you know what I've always wanted to do is write a book. Like that is just something that I've always wanted to do. For me, that was not me. Um, so I, when I was um, entering my business, you know, going to getting diving deeper into online marketing, right? And at first when I started my business in person, in person network and all that things. And then I dive into online marketing world. Like, and it was like, okay, how do I, how do you build credibility? Well, you know, build credibility, you want to write blogs, right? And so I said, okay, I could write a blog every week. You know, be consistent, write a blog every week. Or I could pack it all into one thing at one time. Now, you may or may not know, uh, in addition to essentially being a strategy consultant, also a keynote speaker, and also a professor, I'm also a best-selling author, for those who did not know, right? So, hence, I'm qualified to do this lovely episode. And I remember I actually released my book before the pandemic. And I then, after releasing the book, organized and successfully implemented a campaign selling 500 copies in five days. But actually within the first 24 hours that my book was out and released, it became a bestseller in three categories. Specifically, it reached number one in business project management, it reached number one in business decision making, and it reached number one in philosophy. And it stayed in those places for um, a good couple of days actually. And so how did I go from having no interest at all um, in being an author to becoming a best-selling author and what are all the things in between that I want to impart some wisdom here with you here today for those of you who are looking to become authors? Well, you'll find out in this episode. I want to put a disclaimer. I am not a business coach. I have no intention of opening a publishing company. I am not going to do this episode and at the end say, and if you want to help writing a book, come talk to me. I do not help people writing books, okay? Um, I am merely someone who was asked a question by a longtime viewer of my show. And I said, you know what? That's a great question. And it's actually also a question I've gotten a couple of times during the month of April. So it must be the season of aspiring authors to move forward in their dream. Cause they, they asked me, Vanessa, how you wrote this book, right? Um, so specifically one of my faithful viewers who submitted this question, right? She asked, do you have any episodes on how you become or how you became an author? In addition to speaking, I'm thinking about becoming an author also. And so if you resonate with this question, or if you're just curious about my journey and my dirty little secrets of the journey, then tune in and keep on listening to tonight's episode of Entrepreneurship is a Marathon. And before all of that, though, I know some of you are likely new. So welcome. You're listening to Entrepreneurship is a Marathon with yours truly, Vanessa Zami, the business defibrillator. Every Tuesday, I come here live, 9 p.m. Eastern, Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And what do I do? Either whether it's me or a guest expert, you are listening in to jam-packed tips and tricks. I consult entrepreneurs and micro-businesses on how to revive, on how to grow, and how to scale their business without failing for another year, without the burnout, without the sleep deprivation, and without the overwhelm. And as always, in every episode, What's been your win of the week? Okay. Oh, maybe I should be like a whole thing. Oh, I should make something jingle. Okay. What has been your win of the week? Uh, so actually, my win of the week was actually when a, a viewer last week, she shared how powerful this section of the uh, show is for her, right? This section where, especially and how what powerful it was for her last week. So the section of the show being, what's been your win of the week? She had been listening to the show for months, and it wasn't until recently where it dawned on her like how and why I do what's what's the win of your week um, and for her she had been in a hostile situation in her business with her team uh, and then eventually you know she resolved it she felt really proud of herself but then she was like well I can't share this win with my employees um right because they were involved and or they know or etc but I want to let it out and so uh, she came and she watched the the show one of the episodes and I said, as I always do in every episode, what's been your win of the week? Comment below, type it. You know, if you're watching on YouTube, you type it, you scroll to the bottom, hit the subscribe button, keep on scrolling, you type your, your win of the week. Or if you're watching on Facebook or LinkedIn, you're probably typing to the right of your screen. If you're watching the full screen, 
or you're typing at the bottom as well too, after you put a reaction as well. Um, and so, but this was her space where it was open for her to do so, for her to share her win and for us to celebrate with us, right? As an entrepreneur, as a business owner, it's very easy to get caught up on what's not working, what's, what's essentially wrong with the business or with your life. And, but chances are that there's something that's probably good, right? It's probably a connection you've made, conversation you had, um, you know, some sort of maybe a collaboration you did that is actually working beneficial for your business. So what has been your win of the week? And if you're watching this on replay, why don't you put hashtag replay, Brian, continue to comment below. If you're listening to this on the podcast, then essentially also send us in your, your comments, right? Or send us a review. What has been your win of the week? And feel free to, you know, when you write a review, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you can write reviews. You can just say, what's your win of your win of the week? And you write a review. It'd be great. Uh, so let's get into it. So uh, we're going to get into how did I start, finish, publish uh, my first and my best-selling book in January 2020, right? So I'm going to do this kind of like as if like someone was interviewing me, right? So first question would be, probably, looking back, was this a good decision? So in short, yes. I got what I wanted. Um, I got the best-selling author title. That's what I wanted. Now, if you're looking to make money from your book, this is not a good reason to write a book. For most people, your book is like, uh, you know, you're my, it's like a, it ends up being a badge of honor for yourself. You're like, yeah, I wrote that book. That was me, right? Um, and or you might actually get the best-selling title label, right? And that's it. Now, if you're famous, if you're an influencer, then yes, you will likely make money off your book or in the money that you're probably looking to make. Right now, have I, have I made money from a book? Yes. Has it been $10,000? No. <laughs> okay. So if you're the average Jill, no. Right. You're either writing this book, trying to get this book going. It's going to be a badge of honor for yourself. And best case scenario, you at least be able to get a best selling title out of it. Be like, I'm a best selling author. That's like an honor, folks. It's not an honor. Let me tell you. Right. So how did it begin for me? So after I mentioned this, I lose this in the, the beginning of the episode here. Right. But after I essentially, you know, went through it, I was like, okay, I could write a blog each week how can I make this process more efficient? Let me write a book, right? So to me, a book was like a big, just a, a big compilation of things. It turned out to be so much more than I initially thought. But then, you know, it's like, you know, Facebook like reads your mind, you know, like Facebook reads your mind. So when I had the thought of like, you know what, maybe I'll write a book. The next day I hopped on the face. I hadn't been on Facebook in like a year. I hopped on the Facebook, like first time on Facebook in like a year. And what did I see? an ad for a book writing program. Okay. So yes. So that's what happened. So I went and joined that program. And my question, how long did it take for you to write the book, Vanessa? Great question. So the planning process actually took me three months of planning, plan, plan, write the book. So the outlining process, um, pretty much it was three months of outlining that we did. So the outlining took three months. And actually I had planned a like weekend of writing. Uh, so I had like my already date set up when I like what I actually going to write the book. But the planning process to do the book and like figure out what I was going to write, right, the actual content in the book actually took three months. And funny enough, uh, within the, uh, it was within the, like within five days, actually it was like three days prior to when I was, to when I had set up my weekend of writing, I actually ended up switching up like the, the order of the book and outlining other such things of that nature. So even though I spent three months planning, the book that I actually ended up writing was, really created like three months, three days, <laughs> three days before I actually started, three days before I actually started writing it, right? So with that being said, um, so essentially I then wrote the book and I actually wrote for 36 hours. Uh, so the actual writing of the book took me 36 hours. So less than two days, okay? So the actual writing of the book took me 36 hours, but there are five-star reviews on Amazon for this book because it's an awesome book, okay? Um, right now, some of you might be, maybe you're that person who you have to write a chapter a week and that's just your style. My style when it comes to writing is just knock it out, get the flow. Once the flow comes, we just flow it out and we just keep moving. Okay. So that's why. So for me, less than, less than two days to actually write the book. Then after that, it was editing, right? Cause you know, sometimes the flow is not going to be, it's not as crisp and, crisp and wonderful, right? So editing took about four weeks or so to edit the book. Um, and I read that in my book, like, oh, I must have read my book like 40 times. By the time I was done, I was just like, oh, I'm tired of this book. Oh, go away from me. Um, but ultimately, but that's, that's the editing. That's pretty much what the editing process is. You're just like, oh my God. Um, so with that being said, 
So in total, the whole process was maybe like five, was five months or so, right? Until actual launch. And now you might be saying, but Vanessa, it sounds like a really great program. I would not recommend this program though. So just want to, I would not recommend the program that I did. I won't name names. I'm not going to slam businesses. Um, though if you look in my ebook, in the first few pages, You'll see the name pop up. But honestly, I, you know, the first phase of the program was great. I finished writing the book. I outlined the book. It was great. It was awesome. Uh, met some wonderful people. The second part, you know, me and other people in my cohort, we agree. It was a scam. We felt ripped off. Um, but that was two years ago. So, or three years ago? That was like two and a half years ago. And they were transit, the business was transitioning. And so they may have improved the second phase. Okay. So I'll say. Um, well, I would recommend though, but I'm like, but Vanessa, I still want help for my business. What should I do? Okay, great question. So fortunately for you, um, I do know some book coaches. So I am not, again, as I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, I'm not a book coach, right? So I do not intend to be a book coach. I do not have a publishing company. I know what I do know. I do know some reputable, amazing book coaches who mission it is to help people really write that book that they want to write from start to finish. Right. And not, not the, you know, collaborative projects. So you might be seeing a lot of things out there that's like, write one chapter in a book, right? So my book is 11 chapters of me writing in my book, okay? So I just want to point that out. I got a best-selling title with my own book. Um, and so it is, I know some book coaches though, who are happy to help people, you know, develop outlines, such as that whole outlining process, I about the outlining process, you know, all that sort of jazz. I, I had like this whole, I remember I was doing this when I was living in California. I had this whole huge whiteboard, like bigger than this, like I had this huge whiteboard and I read like, I would like, to, had all these post-it notes um, that I actually took from work because I was writing while I was doing my day job. Uh, so I took these post-it notes and like, I just like posted stuff up and like, was just moving stuff around. Like, okay, this is a good story. I can put that here in this chapter. And I could, that is the whole thing. But with that being said, uh, I know some great book coaches who are happy to help you outline stuff. They do it for a living, helping people write their book from start to finish. And so if you're looking for, you know, send me a message on LinkedIn and Facebook, happy to send some email intros to you if you're serious about writing a book. And if you're watching on YouTube, uh, feel free to scroll down. It should have, we'll try to put something, some resources in the description. I'll ask my, my friends and peers, um, my colleagues essentially, hey, looking to, looking to help you with your business. Um, let me know if you want me to share your name on YouTube. Okay, so now do I have authors as clients? I do. So you may have seen me, I posted an image a few months ago where I talked about all my past and current clients that I've helped to help them revive, grow and scale their business. And you'll see, I have children, Children's book authors, that's one of the things, right? So I do help authors. I do have authors as clients. Uh, some people were authors either prior or after working with me um, and or in the beginning work with me. But essentially, I do have authors as clients. Yes. But they're not my client because we're working together on a book, right? I'm not helping them write a book. I do not help write books. Okay? <laughs> what I do help them do, though, is I help them develop their marketing strategy to successfully launch their book and to then build up a brand and business strategy and take that to the next level. That's what I help them do, right? Help them develop the brand, develop their marketing strategy for the launch of their book, their first book. Usually it's their first book um, or a new book, right? But that's what I help them do. I'm not helping them write a book. If you're looking for help writing a book and you're serious about writing a book, I do recommend you get a book coach, right? Someone to help keep you accountable, either join a program or get a book coach, but essentially getting that support for you so I'm gonna help you actually outline, okay, this is the proper way to think about the outline. If you're writing, oh, and also my book is the category of nonfiction self-help, right? So that is a different outline than someone writing a children's book, which is a different outline from someone writing, um, you know, a autobiography, whatever it may be. So I would just suggest you get a book coach to hold you accountable. If you, you might be in a space where you might be able to invest in a ghostwriter. So I do know some people who are ghostwriters. A ghostwriter is someone who will write the book for you. Um, so I do know some people who are ghostwriters. And so actually I do my second book. I might actually end up a boy and ghostwriter, but we'll talk about that later. Um, so, but ultimately I would say, so either you're getting a book coach to hold you accountable to actually write the book from start to end in an efficient way, right? Cause there are a lot of people who want to write a book and they've been writing that book for 15 years. You don't want to be that person. Okay. You probably don't want, especially if you're doing this for your business and your brand, you don't want to be that person, right? So if you're actually serious about writing the book, get a book coach to hold you accountable. Or if you're in a stage of your business, you might be able to have the funds to get a ghostwriter, right? Get a ghostwriter to write the book for you, honestly. So lots of ghostwriters um, are really great writing autobiographies and memoirs. Uh, so happy to connect you with some people there. 
or I also know a ghostwriter who helps people with their actually nonfiction books as well too. So there's that. And then though, after you write the book and or during your book writing process while it's being published, et cetera, then you hire me for a session to help you define a marketing plan. Okay, that's what happened. And that's just one session, so you're just one session. If you're looking for a do-it-yourself, if you're still unsure about writing a book, it, then actually pretty timely enough, uh, my friend and business colleague is starting a mastermind group for authors, writers, and bloggers. So I asked her, she, uh, you know, share me a, share a link with me for that. Um, it's because it was just very timely. I was like, oh, I'm doing this on this. So uh, if she doesn't send me a link, either, then you know how to reach me. Facebook or LinkedIn, send me a message on Facebook or LinkedIn. And I'm happy to make an intro, introduce you to that mastermind group um, of authors, writers, and bloggers, okay? So lots of resources available to you. So and I'm about to go into the last part, which is what would I do differently about my process? Before I go to that, let me recap. Okay, so it took me three months to plan the book, less than two days to actually write the book, okay? Um, I do not help people write books. I help them develop the marketing strategies for the book. There are people who are out there who can help you write your book, either writing it for you as a ghostwriter or their book coach to help guide you and hold you accountable along with the process. OK, and something I do want to add is that, you know, a, I remember one of the uh, one of the authors I work with, uh, she had, you know, she was like, OK, I've always wanted to write a, a, a book. Right. And so she worked with a publishing company. She actually worked with a publishing company, you know, who was willing to publish a book for her, et cetera. And she like wrote the book and it was like, great. All right. And then the company said, all right, so what are you gonna do for marketing? And she said, marketing, what do you mean marketing? Like she, this is like, she's never done a business before, et cetera. She was in her corporate day job, working at in higher education. She's like, marketing, she's like, what, what? And the publishing company pretty much informed her, yeah, I mean, we're gonna publish the book, but how are you gonna sell it, right? How are you gonna get people to buy it? And so that's when she was like, oh, okay. Um, maybe I'll get an assistant to do that, right? So then she worked with the assistant company and the company was like, Okay, talk to Vanessa. Um, or actually get a marketing strategy in place, right? So that way, because let's say you might be, you might decide, okay, I'm gonna get an assistant to do the marketing for me. That assistant needs a strategy, right? Don't just have someone willy-nilly. If you're intentional and serious about actually making your book a bestseller, and or about actually, you know, helping you getting it to help you with your brand, then be intentional and strategic about your marketing, okay? And your marketing, your sales, and your outreach. And so, you know, best-selling titles don't happen by accident. It's all, it's all strategy, it's all intentional. So set yourself up for success for that. Now, what would I do differently? Or actually, and I think the way I'm going to answer that question, what would I do differently, is what I want to say, what I would I do? That's really what I do. I'll think of it more so, what I'm going to do for my next book. I'll say it that way. What I'm going to do for the next book. So if I, so my first book is actually, so I actually put a link here on the screen. So it's available on Amazon, for those who may be wondering, in case you find out there. You want to get my book? It's called Finish, The Solopreneur's Guide to Getting Stuff Done. So um, it's what navigates essentially the book is a six-step process to help people who have trouble finishing things and helping them get from start to finish on their projects, on their businesses, et cetera, and getting them to really move the needle in their life and in their goals through my six-step process. So called Finish. So the book is called Finish, The Solopreneur's Guide to Getting Stuff Done. It's available on Amazon as an ebook. So you're welcome to check that out. With that being said, my next book, so this is the Nonfiction Self-Help book. I released it in January, 2020. My next book that I write will likely be on, essentially it'll be more nonfiction, like business growth book, right? It'll come, come from all the dozens of examples I've had. I mean, I'm pretty much, when I do my master classes that I do, so I have house a master class every Tuesday. Um, I actually just uh, did one, essentially before the show. Uh, so I host a master class on Tuesdays. And it's not every Tuesday, but essentially most Tuesdays. Um, this is the one before the show. And it's called essentially the Ultimate Business Revival System. And I teach people how to grow their purpose-driven business without burnout. And I go through my 13-step framework. I'll probably write a book on that framework at some point. Now, how am I going to write that book? Will I, will I, actually, when I think about it, will I be the one to sit down and write the book? Eh, doesn't really interest me at the moment. I likely will probably hire a ghostwriter. Alternatively speaking as well too, for those who are looking to write some nonfiction books, let's say you already have expertise, you already have content out there. Pro tip, um, there are lots of audio transcription stuff. So something else I'll probably consider for the book too is um, like, you know, transcribing some things and episodes and having a writer, a ghostwriter, like piece it together probably. probably yeah. I'm just gonna reveal strategies here to you because why not being honest here, being transparent. Um, and that's probably what's gonna happen, right? When is that gonna happen? I don't know. Maybe a year from now, maybe three years from now. I don't really know. Um, again, 
it's I'm a consultant, strategy consultant first, keynote speaker second. I love speaking and teaching. So really technically I'm always speaking and teaching even as a consultant. So whatever. And then third, I'm a professor and fourth, I'm a best-selling author. So that is the way I think about the priorities of my titles here. Um, so when am I going to author another book? I don't know. Um, but chances are perhaps you know when you want to author your next book. So hopefully this episode was helpful for you as I shared my wisdom experience and really ensuring that you get the help that you need to get you to achieve the dream of you writing that book or adding it as a revenue stream or income stream to your business. You know, however you want to think about it, maybe it's your dream, it's a memoir, whatever it may be, but there are definitely a lot of resources out there to help you write a book. And so the only thing stopping you from writing the book is you. Okay. So that's the key idea here. If you don't know nothing, if you get nothing else from this year, the only thing stopping you from writing your book is you. Okay. There are resources out there. So you know, if you want, if you're like, Vanessa, I still don't the resources, just message me. Again, that's a re send me a message on Facebook and LinkedIn. I'm pretty responsive. So, or my, or my team is responsive. Right, so just send me a message on Facebook and LinkedIn. If you're like, hey, Vanessa, I'm running a book. What resources do you have? Happy to share resources. Uh, maybe at some point, maybe I'll add a section on my website or something for this, because I'm getting this question a lot. Um, so, yeah, there's that. This wasn't a, the original episode for tonight. We're going to be a guest speaker um, to talk about actually a completely different topic but they had a last minute change, uh, reschedule. So I just decided to answer. I decided, you know, I was like, you know what? My viewer asked me this question. I was going to answer it in like, you know, a couple of weeks when we stopped having guest speakers come. Um, but what a, a timely thing to do now. So I figured, Hey, it's just, everything happens for a reason. Everything works in our favor. Right? So this was the story of how I started, finished and published my first and also my three category best selling book in January, 2020. With that being said, have a lovely evening and abundant rest of the week. And I look forward to chatting with you again next week on Entrepreneurship is a Marathon. My name is Vanessa Zami, and I'm the Business Defibrillator. Chat with you soon.